Hey, welcome to Greg's Make Corner. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the fixed drive filament dryer. And this was provided to me at no charge in exchange for my honest open review. I've had about a month now to try out this uh, filament dryer and I've been running it through my VZBot printer. I've had a pretty good experience with it. And if you are interested in purchasing a fixed drive, go ahead and check it out on the fixed drive official website and see the description in the video for more information on that. I'd like to keep this video brief, but if you want to know why you need to dry your filament, I recommend checking out Thomas's video, and I'll have that linked in the description. When you first turn on the unit, I noticed that it pretty much takes whatever the ambient humidity is in the air in, in your room. After maybe about an hour, this number is going to drop pretty significantly because it's going to start drying out all of the air that's in here. Your actual filament roll may not actually be that humidity but it's whatever's inside this case. Now, what do these controls do? It's pretty simple. You press this control and it's going to allow you to plus or minus your temperature. And this goes all the way up to 70 Celsius. And it does appear to get that warm in there when I did my testing. So you can also change the amount of time. It looks like you can go all the way up to, I'm not even sure what the limit is on this. I don't think I would recommend running it for more than maybe four hours at a time. But that's it, that's that's all there is on this. If you hit power off, it doesn't really do anything, it just keeps running. One thing that I really do like about this unit compared to some of the others out there is that you can use this optional heat shield here. This is basically gonna protect your filament from getting too hot in one spot because it's deflecting the air so it goes around and circulates. Here you can see I've got the fixed dry mounted to the left of my VZBot printer. One thing that I really like about this unit is that there are several different options for putting a reverse Bowden or PTFE tube in. There's front options as well as top and, uh, and also in the back. But for me, this, this option out the back works really well. And I tested this with an entire roll of filament and was able to print just fine. The rollers in here work really well. I had no feed issues, so it can keep up with even fast printers. If you've got a bed slinger in an enclosure like I've got here, I could easily mount above here and feed down into the PTFE tube. If you've got maybe a bed slinger and you want a side mount, you can do that as well. There's a lot of different options because of the way the PTFE tube holes are. When I want to bulk dry a lot of filament, this is my go-to. I could probably fit 15 or 20 rolls in here. This is a large 12-tray uh, Cabela's food dehydrator. There is a huge heating element and fan in the back. You can't really... Let me move this a little bit, kind of see here. Uh, you can see the heater and you can see the fan. This thing gets really hot really quick and it can dry out most filaments I've found sufficiently in probably two hours. As you can see in here, I've got a lot of TPU. TPU tends to string really poorly when it's wet. I tend to keep my TPU in here until I need it and then I just dry it out almost every time before I use it. If you've got the budget, a machine like this is going to cost you probably 300 bucks nowadays. The downside to this, of course, is that I can't easily feed my printer with it. Now, I could get creative and maybe drill some holes or something, but I don't think I'd want to do that. I have used several different filament dryers probably over the last couple of years. One of the first ones I tried was the eSun, and then I tried the Sunlu not long after that. Those filament dryers weren't bad, but to be honest, I don't know that they really did a whole lot. I know that previous iterations, uh, there definitely was not enough heat circulating around. I do believe that after my testing, that there's definitely better circulation in this one. Now, is it as good as my large food dehydrator? No, but it's. I think it's definitely enough to get the job done. Now, I have done some initial testing with an IR temp gun. When I check the filament, um, you know, I've got the lid off now. But it's, it's getting pretty toasty in there. But you can see it's, it's 74, 73C on this, 75 without the filament sitting there. Once you put the filament in, so that air has plenty of room to circulate and it, it feels pretty good. Okay, I believe this is gonna be a little more accurate. I've got a thermocoupler tester. So we'll go ahead and try this out. So this is showing about um, 24 degrees Celsius, which is about right for my ambient temperature. We're going to test it with it closed at the bottom and just see what we're up to. So the LED is reading 
67 degrees. It looks like it's in the low 60s. So let's go ahead and we're gonna raise this up. So at the top of the filament, we are at about 45 degrees. So there's about a 20 degree difference here with the thermocouple. Now the reality is I think you're still going to get a pretty good dry filament, but it's definitely shy of 70 degrees. So that 70 degrees or 68 degrees in this case, that's only gonna be on the bottom. So that's something to keep in mind. Now if you're printing and you're moving the filament around, you're gonna get a more even dry. But if you're just gonna leave it sit, you might wanna come in here and occasionally move it. In conclusion, I think this is a pretty good filament dryer. The two biggest issues are one, the power button doesn't really do anything and you need to unplug it when you're done. And you don't wanna leave this running, most likely, uh, if you're unattended. The other issue is that it's not getting a full 70 Celsius up here at the top. So if you set it to 70, you're probably gonna have at least a good 15 to 20 degrees difference from the bottom to the top, even if you use the, the piece that deflects the heat. With that in mind, I think this is ideal if you're printing with it, whether using it as a dry box turned off and just having some silica gel packets in there, I think it's good for that. You wanna keep your filament dry. I also think it would be good while you're printing, especially for filaments like nylon that wanna be actively dried. I hope this video has been helpful and I hope it gives you enough information. And once again, I'd like to thank Fix Drive for sponsoring this. And thanks again for watching Greg's Maker Corner.